Hey everyone, Stephen Grower Supply here. I wanted to shoot a video on basically if it's your first time pulling the EBS 260 out of the box, how to get set up, how to log in, how to get hooked up to Wi-Fi, how to get all the canned information that comes from EBS off the printer, get some files set up and start loading information into the gun. So to simulate that, I logged out because every once in a while, Usually on the software, if you're on your, on your internet browser and you're in the software, you're going to get kicked out once in a while and need to be able to log in. Every once in a while, you're going to see it at the printer too. And where you're going to go is you're going to, right here, administrator. And then it's going to ask you for a password. You're either going to be zero or one default. So coming from the factory, it's going to be either a zero or a one. And usually most printers I've set up are zero. So we're going to go ahead and hit zero, get logged in. You're going to see a bunch of information up here on EBS. It's just a preloaded project. If you go to your file system, you're going to right here. If you click on file here, you're going to have information in there that is uh, to EBS. And you might not want that on there. Most don't. So you're going to delete that out. But where I'm going to take you first is let's get this printer hooked up to Wi-Fi. More than likely, when you start using this printer, you're going to want to, you know, your first time, you're going to want to go ahead and hook on to the, the software available on the Internet um, and use your computer to, to do all these edits because there's going to be a lot to do, and I find that you're a lot faster on your computer than you are doing it here on the the printer. So I went ahead and logged out of my wireless connection and uh, since I was talking I'm going to back up and kind of show you again where to go. So your first time you're going to come here and hit wireless, you're going to hit manage and then what you're going to do is you're going to pick which one you want. In our case we right here at Grower Supply we're going to use speed and then you're going to right up here in the corner you're going to hit plus and then now you're going to drop down and if I'm going a little fast, just hit pause on the video. You're going to hit pre-shared key, which is, I don't know why they didn't just put password, but that's your password. In this case, it's our manager's phone number. If you're ever here at Grower Supply, free Wi-Fi. You're going to hit your, once you have it in here, the information in is correct. You're going to hit the green check mark. Confirm it. Yep, that's the information I want. It's going to take a second. You're, not very long. You're going to see right here. There it is. It's plugged in. It means it's connected. That's their sign for connected. Now you're going to hit the back page. It's going to throw up some information here once, once you get here. And what we're concerned with is the IP address. That's what we want right here. This 192.168.1.123. And it's going to change. Don't plug mine in. It's going to change from printer to printer and even, uh, I believe, wireless connection to wireless connection. So pay attention to what, after you've done these steps, what your printer says. And you're going you're gonna to plug that into your URL, your search and not your search engine, your URL box. Uh, and the, if, if the reason I pause is if you hit search engine on your, uh, say you open up your browser and it goes to Google and you type in the, the IP address here in your search engine, it's going to search that and you're not going to get where you want to go. So go up to where you type in www.somethingoranother.com, whatever website, you know, wherever you would type like www.google.com. Um, and, and that's where you're going to put this URL. And to show you that, I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to jump on to a video of my screen so you can see me doing this and opening up the, uh, this, the software. All right, here we are at our internet browser. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump up here to the URL. It's this box right up here. Type in your... IP address. Once you have it, hit enter. Your login is going to be administrator and your password, as mentioned before, will be zero or one. Okay. 
Okay, now you're in. This is your editing software uh, via internet browser. And uh, there's a lot of functions here. If you haven't already watched some of the previous videos, uh, it's very similar to the functions that are on the printer itself, just laid out a little different. So if it's on the printer, it's here, just laid out a little different. So uh, we're not going to go into all these. For sake of time, what we're going to do is we're going to start right here. So click Create New Project. And uh, this printer I've had for a while, I have a file here named GSC. It's where all of my projects are that I've created. Yours is going to say something, I believe it says EBS, and then EBS, there's a project there. Uh, we want to get that stuff off of there. Unless you have a reason for printing that stuff, uh, there's no reason to keep it on. So I wanted to show you, I, I created this stuff just to kind of illustrate how to do this. So you, you click up here. This works for files and projects. You click on it, and then you jump down here to the blue X. Click that, and it'll disappear. Okay, then on the project, I believe it comes canned with a project as well. Delete that as well. And our goal is you should be looking at a blank box right here. Mine, mine uh, is not going to be blank for reasons already said, but uh, yours by now should be. You want all that EBS stuff off and you haven't created any projects you want to keep yet. So now that you have an empty box here, Jump down here, and we're going to start. We're going to create some files. Now, you you may or may not have a use for files. Uh, if you're somebody who's only going to print the same thing over and over and over again, or you're going to only print a few things, or you'll print something and delete it off and create a new project, you might not need files. But if you are somebody that needs files, I want to show you how to create those. So right down here, there's a blue file with a plus sign. Click on that. Enter in what you want it to be named, hit create, and there it is. So we're going to go ahead and open that file and create a project in it. So here is on the internet software how you create a project, very similar to on the printer. We're going to go down to, uh, well first we're going to delete out the file name, that's important. If you drop down here and hit create project with nothing entered in the file name up here, it's not going to go anywhere. So the first thing this software wants you to do is name what you're going to call the project. Then you can come down here and click on your create project. This is your editing page. This is where you can make the magic happen. So this is your field right here where you're going to work within this white blocks. And what this represents is your 32 jets. If you're filling up from top to bottom this entire white box, you're going to use all 32 jets on your printer. Uh, if you didn't know that already, uh, your printer, your EBS 260 is a 32 jet printer. If you look at the business end of the printer, you'll see that there's 32 jets there, 32 nozzles. And uh, if this is full, you're using all 32. If there's white between the top or the bottom, you're not going to be using all 32. That's skipping a jet. So, and there might be very, there might be quite a few projects that might be the case, but I'm just letting you know that's that's kind of what this represents. Um, and we can go horizontally as long as we want. You could literally, if you had a, let's say a pole that was 26 feet long and you wanted to mark all the way from one end to the other, you could, you could create a project that would do that. You can just go horizontally and keep on adding information. So how you do that, depending on what it is you want to create over here, is starting at the top you just have your cursor so if you select one of these and you want to go back to a cursor that's how you do it moving down you have your text and we're going to come and create a text file in a second you have your normal text date and time counter communication port text file okay right here we have this is uh you'll notice nothing popped up when i clicked on it there's nothing this this isn't something uh it says create image here and you can see it pops up when I hover over it. You're not really creating an image. Uh, what you're doing is you're uploading one. The, the editing software doesn't allow you to create an image in here. What we do is we jump on, I just use simply Microsoft, uh, uh, the preloaded paint um, that comes on your, on your desktop. 
I use that paint uh, program to, it's pretty simple. You're only using 32 jets, so you're not getting really intricate on your, you don't have to have major photo editing skills to create an image for this printer. It's pretty basic stuff. Um, so I just jump on paint. Uh, each pixel that you add is a, basically represents a jet and you have to format it. You have to format it to 32, um, 32 height, 32 pixel height. So um, yeah, so that, that's something for a different day. We can go in more detail with that, but with the image, you're not really creating an image on here. You're uh, uploading. So barcodes, we have pretty much the same options here as we do in text. That's just in barcode form. Shapes and a line divider. We'll get into that in a second. For today's video, we're going to go ahead and create a normal text file. This is what you're probably, depending on your use, going to do quite a bit of. So you come up here, and this is representative. Uh, you know, where you click here is where the project's going to be. And what I mean by this is if you pretended this white box here was a white piece of paper and this cursor this crosshair cursor was your printer if you put your printer down on this surface and you start you pull the trigger and start rolling it across the surface where you put this project in this box where you start it is where it's going to start printing for example if i started my project over here saved it opened it up to print it and i put the printer down pull the trigger and started printing you know it's all the way over at the 20 over here I'm going to put it down, pull the trigger, scan, and go, okay, when's this thing going to start printing? When's it going to start? Oh, there it is. And uh, as you can imagine, that's going to kind of make it a guessing game. So I always like to start my print as close to the beginning of the project as possible. So I click there, and that brings up this page, your object parameters page. There's a few options in here that uh, we're not going to get into in this video. There's only three main options I find that are used consistently. That's the text, what you want to print. You enter that in, you're going to see it populate over here, here in just a second. See that? Your text font, and there's quite a few options in here that you can utilize. So you can go through and, you know, you can pick yourself one of these uh, gunplay, I think is a bubbly type font. You know, you can do whatever you want. Say that that's what we want for this time. So you got number one is your text, number two is your font, and number three is your text position right here. You have a position and uh, you just click on here and it's going to give you an X and a Y coordinate. Your X coordinate is your horizontal. So just like we were clicking in that box and it, was, it, it started out wherever we clicked, if you need to fine tune it, so for instance, the very beginning would be zeros on both of these. Uh, so if you click zero, it's going to start as soon as you pull that trigger and roll it across your surface. Your Y, what that represents is the zero is going to start it at the very top. So to illustrate that, if, if, I, if you look over here, we're at the top here. It's going to scoot over just a little bit. There you go, because we changed it from one to zero and moved over just a tad. We're right here in the top corner. If I come in here and I say, well, I don't want it at the top. I want it at, let's say, 10. Give it a second. There it goes. It's going to move down. So that's that's how this function works. So those are the three things. I'm going to leave mine at zero. Those are the three things I always find you have to adjust in here. You, or, you know, you enter in your information in your text to step one. You pick your font, step two, and you at least look at your position. You might be right where you, when you click, you might be right where you want to be, but you at least pay attention to that. So we save that. Now, what I want to show you to do in your projects, something you need to know how to utilize, is say I wanted more text here. Well, that I could have kept on typing there. Or say I wanted something different. I wanted a barcode. That's a good example. Let's pick a barcode here. I can come up here, same as the text. I just come up here and I pick you know, where I want it to appear, as close as possible. This is very similar. Same three steps. The difference is, is you're going to enter in, right? Let's just do uh, X, Y, Z. Now you'll notice it's red. That means this barcode will not, this is not the proper information for that type of barcode. So what you're going to do is, if that's the information you need, you're going to find the barcode that works for you, 
and you probably have to pay attention to what kind of scanner you have. So I like 128s. We use a lot of 128s. It's pretty straightforward, very popular, one-dimensional barcode. So we enter our information in there. What I want to show you, depending on your use, is you also, um, I guess you could call it a fourth thing to pay attention to when you're doing barcodes, is step one, you have your text. Step two, just like picking our, our uh, font, well, basically you replace that with picking your style of barcode. It's kind of the same thing. Step three, your position, again, which is over here now, and I actually like where it is. Like I said, if you're close when you click, you don't have to change it. We're at a zero on our Y, our vertical, and that's right where we want to be at the top. And right now I'm happy with the way it appears. I don't need to change anything, but I at least look at it. Step four that I mentioned on barcoding is some of these come with a signature, and you'll watch. Watch over here when I click uncheck the check mark here. It's going to make the barcode fill that entire area. Now that's important if you're printing on a surface like we do here in the hop industry, where you need as much of that barcode present as possible because we're printing on a surface that has, uh, it's a woven fabric, and sometimes this barcode can get compromised in spots because maybe one or two of those pixels on a thin line like this disappear. So the more we have of that, the more accurate we're gonna get when we go to scan that barcode. So that's something to pay attention to as well. If we're happy with the way this appears, we got our information, we've got our barcode picked, we're happy with the position, we go ahead and hit save. So to, to illustrate how this line divider works, is right now the way it's set up is if I put my printer down and I pull the trigger and I start rolling it across my surface, what you're gonna do is this is gonna print all in one trigger pull, meaning you won't have to pull the trigger again. If you pull and start to roll, it's gonna print. That might not be how you want it to work. You might have a surface where you want it to print the ABCs, but you don't have room for the barcode. You need to put it below it. Easy. Come down here to your line divider. Click on line divider. Put it in here. And when you go and do the same thing, you put your printer down, pull the trigger and start to roll. It's going to print this, but when it hits this, another thing I like to call this trigger pull, another name I call it, or <laughs> I just called it, another uh, name I like to call this line divider is a trigger pull, because that's essentially what it is. You pull the trigger the first time, roll out your ABC, you hit this line divider, and it's going to require you to hit a trigger pull before it'll print this barcode again. So that's a pretty cool feature um, that I use quite a bit, and others do, that I work with as well. So. That's, that's pretty much the basics I wanted to show you in this video. You know how to, through the software, open up your software via your IP address. Um, remember your administrator, if it asks you for a login, your administrator and your password is going to be either zero or one. We went to create project. Uh, we got rid of all of our canned EBS information if we don't have a use for it, which I don't know why you would, but if you do, keep it. And then we uh, actually created a project. Um, well, we created a file first to save those projects, and then we created a project. Last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna hit save. That's gonna save it into that file. You're gonna come up here and you're gonna click close project. And the cool thing is, is if you open a project for printing down here, it's not only gonna be here in the software like it is right here, but it'll also be on the printer ready to use. So that is how we use our software. Hope this was helpful.